Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This just want to go over some of my favorite plays for tonight's nine game NBA slate for tonight on DraftKings. Before we continue though, if you guys could leave a like and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinel16. And if you're interested in the spreadsheet I build every single night for the NBA season, which is what I'm showing you right now, links in the description below for my Patreon. It's been a very nice season for me so far. And if you guys like the videos, this is what I use to help make videos. It's got every, all the stats I use or need, and I have my own projections on there. You can sort it by value, so you know who the best value plays are. You know how much rest the guys get, uh, projected minutes. I got the player info here, the matchup they're in, the Vegas line, uh, the pace that each team plays at, and then you got the advanced stats you use, and then all that stuff. And then I got the DraftKings stats, just the basic stats. And then I have the projections and value on the end. I also have my cheat sheet, my defense versus position chart, so you can figure out, you know, what's a good matchup, what is not. There's some other stuff on the left, but yeah, what's, you know, the rankings behind that. Then I do my cheat sheet as well every single day, and then I update all this throughout lock. So obviously things change throughout the day. These are just my early thoughts of who I like earlier in the day. Obviously news comes out, and I update it throughout the day. So you'll get my most up-to-date stuff, and then you can get access to my Slack chat as well. And that's enough plugging. I just wanted to show you guys with my spreadsheet. I build every single night, put a lot of time into it, and it's been a very good season. So if you want access to it, links in the description below for my Patreon, and let's get into more of the breakdown. So let me just make sure this is set up, and then you guys can see the players' names when I pop it up. Okay. Whoops. All right, so let's start off with my favorite play of the slate, and it's going to be Giannis at 11,300. And he's my top spin up of the uh, slate for me uh, with Westbrook back uh, because so no longer we can we don't get Harden all by himself now so definitely don't want to play 12k for him even though he's been fine I just think we get a slightly better option with Giannis and he's a little bit cheaper and we saw him smash in this matchup versus Chicago two games ago and his price actually came down so I'm actually all about this here put up 38 points 16 boards in 36 minutes versus them which is good for over 70 fantasy points and I see no reason why he can't do it again here. Chicago is one of, if not the worst rebounding team in the league, and it's actually dead last versus power forwards this season, allowing the most points per game to the position. So it really doesn't get better than this matchup for him, and honestly, Giannis should be a little bit more expensive, so he's my guy tonight. His minutes aren't always up there with the big dogs, because you know, Milwaukee tends to get to big enough leads where he's not needed at the end of the game, but he's still averaging 33 minutes on the year per game, and if he needs to play 38 or so minutes, he will do it. He's done it before. We've seen it. He had three, a game, a three stretch uh, three stretch of games where he had 36 minutes so he'll get the big minutes if he's if he's needed to and even if he doesn't he's been very efficient in limited minutes I believe one point in the year he only had 28 minutes and he still scored like 70 fantasy points so he's very efficient while he's on the court that's evident by his insane 1.88 points per minute on the year which is tops out of everyone on just the entire season so far besides Paul George he's actually averaging 2.35 points per minute this season but that's also a two game sample size so obviously that, that'll come down so yeah, it's going to be Giannis here, and just top play of the slate for me. Bucks have a 118-point team total, and I think it's going to be a big part of that. So definitely like Giannis here. It wouldn't surprise me if he ended up getting 80 fantasy points. But I, as of right now, I do have him projected for 70, which I will take at 11,300. So I definitely like Giannis. And then I really like Luka here at 9,800. I think he makes a lot of sense. He's my other favorite spend-up of the slate. And honestly, I'm not sure why his price is below 10K. That doesn't really make sense to me. It came down for no reason, and we should probably take advantage of this while we can. Because it's going to come back up. I don't understand why he's 9,800. It's not like he's been bad either. I mean, I'd understand it if he had a couple you know, games where he struggled. But he hasn't. Last game, he, he scored 57 points. Then 74, 56, 59, and then 72. So, yeah, I don't get it. 9,800 9, seems like a steal for this guy. On the year, he's getting about 35 minutes per game, which is awesome. And he's sitting at 1.65 points per minute, which is awesome. And if you just do simple math there, that's an average of 58 DraftKings po Draft points per game. And if he just gets his average, I'll be happy with that at 9,800. But I definitely think there's room for more versus the Spurs. They're 27th versus point guards and 22nd versus shooting guards. So it's also a good matchup. And we know the guy has triple-double upside every single night. So Luke at 9,800. I like him a lot. If, you're, if we are able to fit in Giannis and uh, Luke tonight, I think that's an awesome way to go. So... Hopefully some more value opens up because we don't have a ton of value on this slate, but really liking Luka and Giannis as of right now. A more GPP option, I like Pascal Siakam here at 9,000. So I'm going to prioritize guys like uh, you know Giannis and Luka before him in cash games, but I do think Siakam could be a pretty solid GPP play tonight. He's getting monster minutes right now with no less than 40 minutes the past four games. I mean, what, 41, 41, 44, 42, that's insane. 
But I will say, he's been a little bit hit or miss this season, which is why I would have more of a GPP play. But he does have a lot of upside here down low versus Charlotte, who we always use big men against. They're 28th versus centers and 22nd versus power forwards this season, and they just continually to get abused down there nightly. Siakam isn't an absolute elite points per minute guy, as he sits about 1.23 for the season. But if we just give him his average minutes the past four nights, that's going to give you about 50 points on average. And plus, it's a great matchup here, so he could smash. Wouldn't surprise me if he got over 60 fantasy points. We've seen it before. A 64 versus New Orleans, it was a good matchup. And then um, earlier in the season, I believe it was against New Orleans on opening night. I believe, and I want to say he almost had 70 fantasy points, so Pascal Siakam, I think he becomes a pretty good play tonight, just more of a GPP play, because I don't think I'm going to be able to fit in him, uh, Luka, and Giannis, so he's more of a GPP play, but I think he's going to be fine. Then going down the list here, not too interesting alert tonight, although that game's probably going to be good for fantasy options, but I guess I'd prefer Russell Westbrook a little bit more. He comes in at 8,300. I gotta be honest, he does feel like a trap at this point. I mean, like a big trap. I mean, he's been burning us for a little bit now. But the price is really nice, especially for someone like Westbrook. And he had an awesome start to the season. He was getting 50 and 60 points every single night. And he was the, he was the actually one we preferred over Harden. That's flipped. It's just not the case anymore. We much prefer Harden now, despite the price tag. But, I mean, Westbrook, he hasn't gotten past 43 fantasy points since November 1st. It's been pretty disappointing. I mean, 57 versus Brooklyn was great, but then 25, 40, 36, 43, 25, 38. Yeah, we're not happy with that. So he's been sucking, but he's going to grade out as a good value on optimizers, and he grades out as a decent value on my sheet as well. So I got to so I gotta talk about him at least. He still has a 30% usage rate on the season, which is great. And he's getting about 32 minutes per game, and he has a pretty nice 1.34 three four points per minute on the season so i do think better days are ahead for him and it's a good matchup versus portland too they're 23rd versus point guards this season and we know the guy's got triple double potential every single night so i think he's a fine play today it's just tough playing alongside harden harden's really taken over he's still got a 40 percent usage rate but i think at 8300 he's becoming a value at this point but he has been disappointing so i'm not totally sure if i'll be able to get there in cash games but i do think he's a fine play tonight given his price tag uh, going down the list here, Paul George, only if uh, Kawhi Leonard would be out, but he's on track to play. Devin Booker, not really, versus Boston. Donovan Mitchell, I guess I understand it, versus Minnesota. He comes in at 7,900, and I'm not really one to ever play the guy. I haven't yet this season, but I get him as a GPP play versus Minnesota. They're 25th and 24th versus point guards and shooting guards, so they've not been great versus the guard position whatsoever. It's also going to be a big pace-up spot for them uh, versus Minnesota as Utah is 26th in pace, but Minnesota is first. So I always like getting guys in pace-up spots, and these Minnesota games tend to be high-scoring. Don't like to play a lot of defense, and they play at a really fast pace. And he has a 31% usage rate on the season. He's getting about 35 minutes per game and about 1.2 points per minute, which is pretty solid. And he had a really good game last time out versus Memphis, which was also a good matchup where he had 53 fantasy points. Typically, he's going to be, the, be in that upper 30s to the mid-40 range, but he has 50 points. 50 point upside we've seen it multiple times this season so i think he's a fine play just not someone i'm going out of my way to fit in my lineups because it's 7900 i can't really see myself getting to him especially if i go a little bit top heavy but we'll see kevin love even though i'm a Cavs fan probably not going to play him andrew wiggins no capella no uh sabonis so originally when i was looking at him he was questionable so i wasn't you know too sure what to say about him but i guess he's you know, he's good to go, so he's in a really good spot down low versus Brooklyn, and he's been great. He's been a double-double machine. He's had a double-double for what? Uh, he had one versus Milwaukee, had one versus Houston, OKC, Orlando, had one versus Detroit, Washington, Cleveland, Brooklyn. He did not. So last time he, I didn't have a triple-double was actually against Brooklyn, but he still had 48 fantasy points. He scored 29 points and 8 rebounds, so he's going to be fine. I think he's a good, he's in a really good spot. Miles Turner is back, so I guess that hurts him slightly, but I think they're both going to have good games here, and Sabonis is actually grading out as one of the better values on the slate, which is surprising at 7,300, but my sheet likes him, so and I've been trusting it all season, so he should have a pretty good game here. I think I got him for a, like above 45 points, but at 7,300, I will take that. He's in a weird pricing spot, though, so I'm not totally sure, because I usually don't tend to play a lot of 7K guys. I'm usually in the upper... 9k and above range then i got a lot of a lot of like low 5k or 4k or 3k guys so we'll see if he ends up making a lineup but it's a bonus i think he's a pretty good play tonight and he i'm not sure how popular he's going to be but definitely he's in a good spot so don't mind Sabonis here uh mccollum had a huge game last night it's a good matchup versus houston but i feel like i'm point chasing a little bit because 7300 i think it's just a little bit too much for mccollum even though he had a really good game last night just feel like i'm point chasing marcus aldridge no thank you 
Uh, Devontae Graham, no. Hassan Whiteside, he actually makes some sense versus Houston here. Not more of a GPP play. Probably won't play him in cash, but Houston isn't great defensively. And this game does feature the highest over under the slate at 230.5. So it would make sense to get the exposure for this game for sure. Whiteside doesn't get huge minutes. He only averages about 28 minutes per game. But we have seen him get big minutes occasionally. I mean, 35 versus Atlanta, 30 versus Toronto, 35 versus San Antonio. Yeah, if he can do that tonight, I think he's in probably for a pretty big game here. He's very efficient while on the court. He's got a 1.25 points per minute guy, and Houston plays fast and is not great down low or really at all besides point guards. I believe they're like 18th versus centers right now. So Hassan Weiss, I think he's a fine GPP play. Can't see too many people going on him because I think a lot of people are going to play Miles Turner, Sabonis, and yeah, people like that. So I don't know if he's going to have too much ownership, but I do think he's a fine GPP play. But my favorite center of the night, it's going to be Miles Turner at 6,100. Because you can also play Sabonis in the power forward spot. But Sabonis, I think, uh, not Sabonis, uh, Miles Turner, I think he's an awesome play tonight. And his price sticks out like a sore thumb at 6,100. Like last night, I look at the salary beforehand. I usually make my videos, you know, at night. But I was busy with NFL, so I made this video later in the day. But Miles Turner was the guy that was really popping out to me at 6,100. I mean, he's just coming off a big game versus Milwaukee where he had 16 points, 11 boards in 33 minutes, which is good for 44 fantasy points. I believe he knocked down a couple threes as well. He had three for seven from three. Took seven threes. That's pretty great. So I like the upside here, and he was probably 7K in this matchup uh, in October, and I liked him then a lot. Unfortunately, he got hurt and only scored 10 points. I mean, you can't predict people to get hurt. I mean... But I view him as an excellent play here. He should be over a point per minute tonight as Brooklyn is awful versus centers. They're allowing the third most points per game to them. And also Sabonis was questionable throughout. I wrote some notes down earlier that Sabonis was questionable, and I said he'd be even better play if he was out. Well, Sabonis is in, but I still think they're both fine plays. They're both a little bit too cheap, and it's a great matchup. So Miles Turner, I like him a lot tonight. I think he's going to be a very good play. And at this point... So, unfortunately, we had, like, 20 guys yesterday that were 3K. Uh, I don't know how many people play NBA on Sunday, but I actually took down my single entry again on last night. It was a pretty uh, good slate, although I tied with, like, three people. Everyone had the same lineup. It was just so chalky last night. Alexander Walker, Melly, uh, Drew Holiday, LeBron, Anthony Davis, uh, Vucevic, and Etwan Moore, whatever. Everyone had <laughs> But still got first. But, I mean, there was just so many free guys last night. You know, the Pelicans were missing 70 people. But hopefully some more value opens up. We'll see how it shakes out tonight because I really want to spend up for a lot of guys. But not a lot of value plays as of right now. But I do have two guys I think might be pretty solid here. So Daniel House, he comes in. I forget his price exactly. It's like yeah, 3700 So he's expected to play tonight. He's missed the past couple games, but expected to be back. And he's been very solid when on the court. And, you know, he's going to be returning from injury. And He's seen around 30 minutes per game, sometimes more, sometimes less. I mean, we've seen 39 minutes versus Golden State, 36 versus Memphis, 19 versus Miami. But they were get was at the end. Of, yeah, they got this is the game they got blown out. 32 versus Brooklyn, 29 versus Washington. I think he's a pretty good play here. He should be around 30 minutes tonight. That's what I'm projected for. And you know, we've seen him have multiple games over 30 points this season, like versus Washington, versus Memphis, which are. And versus Chicago as well. So in good matchups, he's done pretty good. And it's a good matchup versus Portland. And I want pieces from this game. It's got the highest over-under on the slate. And Houston plays fast. And also, like I said, it's a good matchup versus Hort uh, Portland. Portland. They're, they're 21st versus small forwards and 27th versus power forwards. And House seems like a nice value option on this on a good offense here. They're going to score a lot of points. And I think he can knock down some threes here, pick up some peripheral stats. And I will take it at 3,700. He's actually grading out. I believe is my number one value on the sheet. I looked earlier. I didn't read my projections. I think he's my number one value play as of right now. So we'll see. You know, things can change throughout the day. But Daniel House, he makes an awesome play tonight. Then not really too comfortable about this play. But like I said, we do not have a lot of value options. And little here at 3,300. I just like getting cheap options in high-scoring games. So little would make sense here on the opposite side of House. He's been getting the nod over Hazonia. And he's seen 23 and 32 minutes the past two games. Now, it hasn't equaled to much points at all. I mean, 16, 17 points, not great. But it's not like we need a lot for him. I think he gets about 30 minutes tonight, and he should be able to very ugly sweep out 20 points for us, which, you know, I'll take 20 from someone that's 3,300. He should be able to allow us to fit in Giannis and, and or Luca here, or maybe someone like Siakam. So, Little, you see Little, I think he makes a little bit of sense here. Maybe if we can maybe we can get a cheap double-double. We'll see, but not expecting much here. But he's basically uh, mid-price. And we'll have to see if any injuries pop up. If some injuries pop up, we'll make lineups, making lineups a little bit easier. But as of right now, this is what I got. 
So again, guys, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Really helps me out. Really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at chrispinell 16 Spreadsheets available in the link in the description below. It's got everything I use every single day on here. So, I mean, you'll get access to everything I look at throughout the day. And if you guys like my video, you'll definitely like this. And you'll get it updated in real time because it's a Google Doc and it updates automatically. So, that's all I got. So, see you guys in the next video. And I wish you guys the best of luck tonight.